Hey guys, Griff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. It's cloudy and it's been cloudy at night in Tokyo so I haven't been able to do any imaging. But I am going to take advantage of this to give you some tips and tricks about auto guiding with uh, PhD2. The reason for that is I noticed that my previous video where I was talking about predict predictive PEC uh, was well received and a lot of you guys didn't know about this, uh, this little trick. So I decided to just uh, make sure I had like a single video with all of my uh, PhD2 tips and tricks in there. Now I'm not a PhD2 expert, I'm not an auto guiding expert, I know only the basics so I'm not going to go into the details of all of the configurations you know you can do in PhD2 because I don't know what all of those configurations actually do or if I do know I don't know the exact impact that they have or if I do know the impact I don't know how to explain it well enough so yeah I'm just going to go through some simple uh, tips and tricks that can be applied very fairly easily as well as the reasoning behind each of those Okay, and here I am in PhD2. By the way, if you're in a PhD2 and you don't see the graph area at the bottom, you really want to go under view and make sure the display graph here is checked. Uh, this is something that's very useful and that we'll use at some point in this video. The first thing you want to make sure of, and it's a simple checkbox, is to make sure that you have uh, enabled guiding with multiple stars or multi-star guiding turned on. So to make sure of that, I'm going to go into the brain icon here and under guiding, you have the use multiple stars checkbox here. Uh, make sure that it's checked. If it's unchecked, check it. That's pretty much the entire tip. Now, why is that? I have a video de dedicated to the uh, topic, but long story short, uh, by default, uh, PhD2, uh, guides on a single star or maybe in the latest version it defaults to multi-star guiding I'm not sure but if it guides on a single star uh, that star will be affected by seeing which is like atmospheric movements and if you're if the star is affected by the seeing uh, PhD2 will understand it as the star moving in the field of view and so PhD2 will try to chase that that star that's moving even though it's not really moving it's just the atmosphere being turbulent and PhD2 will instruct the mount to fight the atmosphere and spoiler alert mount versus atmosphere the atmosphere always wins <laughs> so that doesn't work and there are two solutions to uh to basically alleviate this problem the first solution is to average the uh, seeing effects over time and to average the seeing effects over time you take long guide exposures something like three seconds of or more if you look at older forum posts uh, that kind of stuff people will suggest that exposure lengths for auto guiding should be three seconds or so because then you average the scene and you're not chasing the scene so that's been the legacy way of dealing with dealing with scene the new way or like since one and a half two years ago is multi-star guiding and when you're doing multi-star guiding, you're not guiding on a single star, you're guiding on multiple stars at once. So what you're doing is because you have multiple inputs, you're averaging the seeing not over time, but over space in this case. So you have multiple stars, you can average the multiple stars together, and that will let you chase the seeing much less. The effect of multi-star guiding is immense. It will completely help your guiding root mean square our average performance and it will actually be visible in terms of the final image highly recommended and especially if you are using a strain wave gear type of mount or harmonic drive like the am5 or the rst125 uh, you really you want to have like short guiding exposures and that means that unless you're using multiple star guiding that means you'll be chasing the scene so if you have short guiding experience uh, exposures like less than three seconds like one second or even 0.5 seconds long you absolutely want to make sure that you're using multiple stars okay that's the first uh, that's the first tip the second tip is the uh, guide assistant from PhD2. So the guide assistant, it will let you set up some settings for your uh, guiding performance. And to access it, you'll go inside uh, tools and you have guiding assistant here. So what you want to do is to point uh, your telescope to some place in the, in the star, okay, in the sky. And uh, you'll want to um, just like launch this tool and you'll need to choose a star that is uh, uh, that has a signal to noise ratio above 10 and that is not saturated so to check that you just 
like you'll have your image here on the left, assuming you're like um, taking uh, pictures in a loop, and you click on the star and you look at the bottom right, like is the SNR over 10? If yes, then good. Is the star, is there like a saturated uh, red or yellow word that's uh, written there? If yes, then it's bad. So you want to make sure that uh, to find a star of medium brightness effectively, so that when you click it, it will have like an SNR of let's say 20 and it will not be saturated. And the saturated word will not appear in, your, in the, the, the banner at the bottom of PhD2. Once done, you click the uh, start button and PhD2 will take a few minutes to do um, some measurements effectively. It will also let you know if you're not at an ideal, pointing at an ideal spot in the sky, it will give you some um, guidance as to how to go to a better spot in the sky. I'm not going to go into those details right now, but once you once the process is over, and while the process is running, by the way, you want to make sure to not be disturbing the mount whatsoever. On my rooftop, that means moving. Even moving as I am my arms right now, that actually vibrates my mount here. Even though I'm not touching it, it's from the ground. <laughs> so yeah, be careful, leave it be, do not interfere with it until it's completely over. Once it's over, it will spit out some results. So I can look at my results from a previous session. So this one, very old session, over one year ago, but whatever. And you can see you'll get tons of measurements, which if you're a nerd, you'll love to look at. I love to look at them. I am a huge nerd, uh, but you don't have to. You can just look at the recommendations and it will say like, okay, your right ascension minimum move should be 0 0.10 pixels. Your declination minimum move should be 0 0.15 pixels. Uh, this is basically like the minimum, I, as far as I understand it, the minimum movement that PhD2 needs to detect to tell the mount to move or to basically follow the star. Um, so yeah, I mean, then you just click on apply, apply, and it just puts those numbers in. And typically you'll get some marginal improvement, which is always nice. Now, if your guiding isn't broke, don't fix it. You don't need to apply those, but it can be very interesting. There's also, if you uh, had the um, measure declination back, uh, backlash checkbox checked here, you'll also have like a backlash uh, graph. And this is for the declination axis. The declination axis is uh, this one, so left, right, this, uh, this axis there, and it is prone to backlash, meaning when I reverse directions of the drive, it takes a little bit of time for the drive to kind of like catch up that it has reverse directions. This is not a problem for the RA axis, that this axis here, simply because for the RA axis I never need to reverse direction because the Earth rotates. And so by just stopping the movement on the RA axis, it's as if I had reversed it. It's a, it's a very cool uh, principle. So backlash on the RA axis, we don't really care. Um, uh, we do with like techniques about like more weight on one side, but whatever, I'm not going to go into there right now. The declination backlash is something that we might care uh, a bit more about, especially if you have like guiding directions that says like, okay, move to the left. And then the second afterwards, it says like, move to the right. And if you have a lot of backlash, you need to overcome the backlash. It can take a long time. For me, in this case, overcoming the backlash takes 0 0.7 seconds. That's quite a lot, a long time, even though it's like, it's short from a backlash standpoint. This by way was, the, with the EQ6R mount, not with uh, this particular mount. Uh, your backlash, by the way, depends on how well your worm and gear, so the mechanism in there, is meshed together. Uh, depending on the meshing, the backlash will change. My particular telescope, um, like it has a knob that you can add adjust that meshing and that means that I don't really want to use backlash adjustment because if I adjust the knob it will adjust the meshing I will need to adjust the backlash adjustment PhD2 does it on its own but then my guiding results are already good enough as they are if it ain't broke don't fix it so I'm, I don't have backlash enabled which means I cannot apply if you see you cannot apply as well you just go to the brain icon go to algorithm and enable the backlash compensation that will let you apply that number and it will put basically 700 and 10 milliseconds that I have here in, uh, in this box here. Um, and that means that whenever PhD2 reverse direction, so let's say PhD2 was sending to the telescope and to the mouth like instructions to move left, 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 and then suddenly it needs to move right. Before moving right, it will like send a guide pulse of 710 milliseconds long to overcome the backlash and then add the guide pulse on top of that. So that's what's happening with the backlash compensation.
Now, if your backlash compensation is large and you're not comfortable enough to adjust the backlash on your own mechanically, then uh, overcoming that backlash um, each time you reverse guiding directions can be too much uh, in terms of, and it will have Im impacts on the final image, even if you have enabled backlash compensation in the PHD2 settings. It's, it's software trying to correct hardware errors. And so there is another way, and that's my next tip, to fix declination backlash. It's to have poor polar alignment. Yes, repeat after me, I should not polar align perfectly. <laughs> Yes, you want to be slightly off in terms of polar alignment if you have very poor backlash. Um, let me explain why. And that means you're, you're basically fixing mechanically that mechanical issue. So what's going to happen is that if you have poor polar alignment, your declination axis, which normally should almost never be solicited when you guide, uh, because you're, you're tracking stars and in theory you're not deviating in the declination direction. Um, but what's going to happen is that the declination axis will drift away from the center. So if I look at the graph here at the bottom, and I'm not sending guide pulses to my mount, I will see the red graph, which is my declination axis, gradually move towards like the top, so guide, like towards the north, the north direction as we uh, call it, I believe. And if it goes towards the bottom like that, it means it's, guide, it's going towards the south direction. Okay, so that means that since we've now basically fixed the direction of the declination drift, we're able to counter that by guiding in a single direction, which means we never have to revert directions. We can keep guiding a single direction and because we don't need to reverse, we don't have to deal with backlash. Awesome. So what that means is that if you have this problem and so now you intentionally have poor polar alignment. So to achieve poor polar alignment, you can use like Nina or Sharp, sharp, uh, sharp Cap to, um, to achieve perfect alignment. And then you move that randomly by round to have like poor polar alignment by maybe 10 arc seconds. That should be enough. Then what you want to do is you want to go inside the brain icon and you want to go into guiding and temporarily and you should ne not forget, like I have, to re-enable it. Um, you want to uncheck this Enable Mount Output uh, checkbox. Uh, this means that the, there will be no guide pulse pulses sent to the mount. Then you want to point to a star, start the guiding as usual, except that because there will be no guide pulses, you'll see the declination go like towards the top like that, or go towards the bottom like that. Let's say that I, ha I see a deviation towards the north like that, so my declination is drifting towards the north progressively. Okay, so what I'm going to, to do is I'll go into my algorithm under the uh, brain icon, and under the declination guide mode, um, will be uh, setting south, I believe. Um, you might want to do like a couple of tries to make sure that's the way it works. But as far as I understand it, if you set south here, the declination guiding will only put uh, guide pulses to in a single direction. Or you can still keep it to auto and make sure that you don't enable backlash compensation so that most of the declination guide directions should still be in a single direction. And if it does go to the other direction, it doesn't matter that much because backlash compensation isn't enabled. So it's, it's not going to try to fight the backlash. It's not as good as, uh, as guiding in a single direction, but it can work. As you can see, that's a pretty manual kind of method. So if you're uncomfortable with doing that, that's fine. It's only if your uh, declination backlash, backlash and your declination guiding is really bad and it's messing up your images that you may want to consider having poor polar alignment. And our next tip is the same tip that I had in my previous videos. So it's just predictive uh, pecs. So you can see here, I have my uh, algorithm set to the default, which is hysteresis, but because I have um, a worm gear drive, I have what is called a periodic error. Uh, there's multiple ways that you can combat this periodic error, again, using software to fight hardware issues. Uh, but the easiest way, uh, in my opinion, and very effective is to just like change this algorithm to predictive peck and forget about it. If it's not working well enough for you, something I didn't mention in the previous uh, video, you may want to just like 
uncheck the auto adjust period checkbox here and set the actual period of uh, your mount, which for uh, my mount is five minutes. For a lot of Skywatcher mounts, it's eight minutes. You can find that online by uh, Googling it. Okay, for me, uh, auto adjusting the period has worked quite well. You can see it's auto adjusted to 300.25 seconds, which is 0 0.25 seconds off. Yeah, good enough. Okay, so predictive peck, it's another great way to, uh, to deal, to, to help your getting in PhD2 if you have a worm gear drive. If you have predictive peck enabled, you want to make sure that you have any other periodic error correction methods disabled. So don't try to have permanent periodic error correction and predictive peck, it's just gonna be a mess. Okay, so one or the other. Okay, and that's, that was my uh, next uh, tip. Now, my last tip is you want, if you have guiding issues, you want to analyze what could be the cause of those guiding issues. And one of the best tools out there is uh, PhD2 Log Viewer, which is also available from the PhD2 website. And this is my last tip, it's review your guide logs. And in PhD2 Log, Viewers, Log Viewer, I can view uh, my guide logs and something I, I actually wasn't even aware of and it's you guys who told me about it I can right click on the graph and say like analyze the selected frames and once I do that what's very important or for me what's very interesting is the frequency analysis because it tells me where like I have um, basically periodic errors that I see and you can see the big spike here is at exactly 300 seconds or 298.8 in this case and that is my worm gear periodic error even though I'm auto guiding and that was because I was auto guiding at the time with hysteresis algorithm uh, it's still there because I, I, I'm fighting the periodic error but not correcting it completely and you can see that it was 1.1 uh, if you look at the number here and we go back it was 1.1 arc seconds of that periodic error that is left in here. Uh, you can see, by the way, I have other peaks like this one um, at uh, 100 seconds. I'm not sure what the period of that is. It's probably one of the gears in the motor assembly or whatever, but it's not the biggest contributor, so I don't really care. So when you see this and you have like a fairly large pike here, you know that your periodic error is still remaining even though you are auto-guiding, so using predictive peck might be a good thing. Uh, you'll also see in there whether you have like your declination uh, backlash is causing issues and there are documents on the internet letting you kind of analyze your graphs or you can simply post them on a forum and ask uh, for advice and uh, even just send the, the log files. But it can be very interesting. You can, um, and if I look, by the way, at the graph after I use the uh, periodic um, error correction, so the predictive peck, and I do the same thing as before. So I right click, I analyze my selected frames, and I do frequency analysis. You can see the peak is still there. It's still there to some extent, so it's not perfect. Again, we're using software to counter hardware issues. Let's not forget that. Uh, but you can see the am amplitude went from 1.1 uh, 1, 1 arc seconds to 0 0.4 arc seconds. Uh, someone in the comments had uh, told me that um, this could have been because the, I, had, I was using different targets with different declination coordinates, which it's true it can have an impact on the final uh, image. Uh, but I, I checked again uh, on the same target afterwards and I got the same results. Uh, but anyway, that was my last tip. Don't, uh, like, especially if you're a nerd, look into your, your guide charts um, directly to see, and this tool is a great way to uh, analyze them. So some tips and tricks to get uh, better guiding, depending on your own hardware, on your own issues, and there's at least one of them that you should always use, which is the multi-star guiding. And with that, thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of tips and tricks, feel free to like this video, click subscribe, leave a comment down below with more tips and tricks. Or if I've made a mistake, let me know down in the comments and I'll pin your comment on, or add a pinned comment or whatever to correct my mistake. With that, again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars. Yeah, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>